So our first speaker with us today talking about the Sanborn maps is Hallie Pritchett. Hallie Pritchett is the head of government map and government information library at the University of Georgia. It's a regional federal deposit Hori Library, and it's the largest academic map collection in the country. One of the largest. One of the largest. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, you sure have a lot of information about maps, and we're super excited to hear what you have to say. Right. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you for coming. I must say that on weekends, I am absolutely not a morning person, so please <laughs> forgive me about that. Um, so again, I'm going to uh, talk about Sanborn fire insurance and other maps that you can use to do research on the history of your house. So maps and air photos can be useful tools for doing research. Um, seeing when your house first shows up on a map or an air photo can help determine how old it is, what the might, land might have been used for before the house was built. So today I'm going to talk about some of the resources available in the UJ Map and Government Information Library, specifically the Sanborn fire insurance maps and other maps, as well as air photos, and show you how you can use, can use those in your research. Ah, okay. So first I'll talk about the Sanborn fire insurance maps. Um, these were originally created for assessing fire insurance liability. Um, the Sanborn company started publishing these maps in 1866. Um, the use of fire insurance maps declined after World War II as the insurance industry modernized its methods of assessing risks, but the Sanborn Company did continue to provide updates of the maps. And these are large-scale maps that show quite a bit of information. They show building footprints and composition, of course, because fire insurance maps are first and foremost concerned about fire insurance liability with the buildings that, that are shown. Um, they do show street names and addresses, property boundaries, locations of higher hydrants, water, and gas mains, again, important with uh, uh, fire insurance assessment, and also natural features like rivers, creeks, lakes, etc. cetera. Uh, the Stanborn Company still exists, but today they focus on GIS, which is uh, Geographic Information Systems and Geospatial Data, which is data that has a uh, geographic component so it can be put on a map. Uh, but they still do supply digital copies of historic Sanborn maps. Uh, many large map collections in university archives and special collections hold Sanborn maps, such as UGA. Uh, we hold maps of Georgia cities and towns, and the Library of Congress holds a comprehensive collection of the entire country. And oftentimes these large uh, map collections um, throughout the country will hold maps just for their state. Um, just because they tend to be, even for your own state, a pretty substantial collection. So these historic maps are currently used for researchers, for research by historians, historic preservationists, demographers, and genealogists, among many others. So this is the index sheet for the set of Sanborn maps of Athens from 1885, and that is the earliest set that we have of Athens. Each set of maps includes an index sheet that shows the extent of the set. And you notice the inset maps of various mills and manufacturing companies around the edge of the map. And oftentimes for the smaller uh, towns in Georgia and throughout the country, um, the presence of a mill or a manufacturing company was often the impetus for getting a uh, sandboard map of that particular town because again, um, Fire insurance issues with uh, some of these mills, of course, were very important. So here's a closer look at the index on that map itself. Uh, besides a map index, it also includes information about Athens. And at the time, the population was 8,000, and that was, again, 1885, and an index of specific businesses. Later map sets have street indexes. And the color blocks on the map index indicate the coverage for each sheet. And then, of course, this early one only has actually four maps that show um, Athens. So you can see that quite a bit of the downtown area really isn't covered. Now, this is sheet two of the 1885 Athens set. And the sheets themselves are a bit smaller than two feet by three feet. And what the scale is one inch equals 60 feet. So you can, or excuse me, 50 feet. So you can see quite a bit of detail on these maps. And if you notice this one, too, um, it's showing downtown and, of course, uh, North Campus um, for UGA. And many of these buildings, of course, are still here. Um, some of them are a little different, but they're, they're still here. Now, this is the index sheet for the 1926 set um, of Athens. 
And this set has quite a bit more coverage than the 1885 set, as you can see from the different color blocks there. In 1926, the population was 28,000. And the area that's inside the red box at the center of the map is downtown. Now this is the, 19, or the sheet 35 from that set showing UGA. Um, again, of course, you can see that campus has expanded a fair amount. Um, and many of these buildings are still standing. Now notice the different buildings are shown in different colors and this indicates what each building is made of. Because these are fire insurance maps, what each building is made of as well as what it's used for is very important. These are the keys to the symbols and colors used on Sanborn maps. The one on the left is from the 1926 index sheet, while the one on the right is from a separate index pamphlet and, it, pamphlet and it shows quite a bit more information. In looking at the colors of the buildings, those shown in yellow are frame or wood. Those shown in red, which really kind of shows up as a pinkish, um, are in brick. Those are, that are blue are in stone. And those that are brown are considered fireproof. So here's a closer look at sheet two from the 1885 set, and this is downtown Athens right across the street from UGA. And some of these buildings are still standing, particularly around the uh, intersection of Broad and College. Um, the commercial buildings are labeled with the type of business that was conducted there. And notice there are a couple of hotels and a church. Um, let's see if you can see here. Um, so here's Baptist Church here. Um, no, I can't. I can't even see where the hotels are, but there are there are hotels on here. Yeah, on the bottom? The bottom oh, yes, the commercial here. Okay. Yeah, where Five Guys is currently. Um, okay. Okay. Um, and most of the buildings that are shown in yellow are actually dwellings. So these are houses that were actually in the downtown area. And also notice way up here there is a fire station. And then the Soldiers Monument, too, which I believe is now in the middle of Broad Street. That is way up here. Now this is the same area in 1913, and most of the dwellings have been replaced by brick commercial buildings, and there are also a couple fireproof buildings. Specifically, here's this, whoops, did I go back to the wrong one? There we go. Um, so here the Southern uh, Mutual Insurance Company, um, here is the Holman Office Building, and these are considered fireproof. Um, and again, these things still are probably made of brick, um, or stone, but their construction is such that they were deemed to be fireproof buildings. And this is the same area in 1926, and now it's entirely commercial. There are no more dwellings here. Um, oh, one other thing I wanted to show you, on, was it this one? No, oh, sorry. Um, so you'll notice that the Lumpkin Law School here in the lower left-hand corner, which of course is now no longer in existence here. Um, what I find kind of fascinating about this, if you look closely at some of these, um, you'll see there are things like uh, cigar and tobacco stores and pool halls and Nickelodeons and whatnot. So this still was a college town even back then. <laughs> no. And in fact, when I, I use these for, to show our students um, when they're taking tours and they always find that just very amusing. So this is the area around City Hall in 1913, and there are quite a few dwellings here because this is a bit further um, away from the actual downtown area. Okay, And you notice that some of these have outbuildings, and like the one house next to City Hall has a servant's quarters and a stable. Okay, So right here. Um, also notice this is the U.S. Post Office uh, Federal Building here, and then again this is the Georgian Hotel, which of course was considered fireproof. So by 1926, the stable and servants' quarters had been replaced by an ice cream plant and a filling station, and that you can see here, so they must have been able to drive in um, off the corner here um, with this kind of uh, curved uh, building here. All right. But the post office is still here, as is the Hotel Georgian. Here's the Presbyterian Church that's here. All right. So now this is the 1967 revision on microfilm. 
Um, and unfortunately, that's about the best quality we can get. It's in black and white, of course. Now, when these maps were revised, the Sanborn Company would send out sections to be glued onto an existing map, which would update the map until a reprint in its entirety would be produced. So if you look closely, you can see that where this was done. Okay. On, the, on this map, and again, this is the 1967 updates, you can see there's quite a bit has changed. Um, you can see, uh, for example, kind of right here, you can kind of see where this has been pasted on. All right. So a new post office has been built, and that's right here. All right. And the U.S. Department of Agriculture took over the old post office building. And interestingly, this here in the previous map was an undertaker's par parlor, but now it's the library which obviously it's no longer a library. Okay. Um, so at UGA, our Sanborn fire insurance maps for Georgia cities and towns um, are from 1884 to the 1940s in paper, and the later updates up into the 1960s for some cities and towns are on microfilm, and as you saw back there, quality is so-so. Um, in the Digital Library of Georgia, the Sanborn fire insurance maps for Georgia cities and towns are available from 1884 to 1922, and these are all maps that are scanned from our collection, and incidentally, McGill stands for Map and Government Information Library, because it's easier to say that. <laughs> um, but everything after 92 is still under copyright, so we can't put it online, but they're still available for researchers to use um, for your own research, and occasionally do have, people have want to take and publish these, and anything that's still under copyright, you need to get permission from the Sanborn Company. Um, and I will say that you cannot download maps from uh, the Digital Library of Georgia. You can look at them. So if you do want to look at them in more detail or get copies, you need to come into our library. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so this is DLG Sanborn uh, uh, homepage, um, and it does allow you to search by address. Um, they When they created this uh, particular project, they went in and had students extract um, metadata down to the address level, which is a very useful feature here. Um, I should also note here on this area, it says from the collection that um, actually uh, rotates through as you go through the page, and this one actually shows the Georgia State Sanitarium for the Insane. Apparently, they allowed the students to choose what little features were there, so not only do you have things like that, but you seem to have quite a number of breweries and other interesting <laughs> things. So um, it shows you some of the really fascinating things that you can uh, see in a Sanborn fire insurance map from a college student's point of view. Okay. Um, another type of map that shows building footprints are the Georgia County Highway maps. Um, and we have those from the 1930s to present, and they are published every decade. Um, these show buildings and other structures along county highway maps, but they're not nearly as detailed as Sanborn maps. The benefit, though, is that they often show, well, because they're county highway maps, they'll show these buildings, et cetera, further out, say, from towns and, and what have you. Now, in our library, we have from the 1930s to the 1990s in paper, and the 2000s to present are digital, and they're available in the Georgia Government Publications database. And we are currently in the process of scanning these older maps and georeferencing them so we can put them in a GIS and make them available online. Um, so we are hoping over the course of this coming year, and it's I guess it's already into the second month of 2017, believe it or not. Um, so we're hoping that we have a good idea of how we want to do this um, um, by the end of the year. Uh, what you have in the um, GGP, a government, Georgia Government Publications Database, are really static maps. And what we're hoping to do is be able to have these maps available so you can use them as layers in a GIS so you can do some comparisons and also be able to download them. So, so stay tuned for that. We're, we're, um, uh, making good progress on getting the scanning done. So, okay. So this is a county highway map of Madison County from 1938, and many of these in the 30s actually were done as part of the Public Works Project. And some of the um, uh, this one, I don't know if it says that on there, but some of them uh, show that, which is is quite interesting. Um, and in addition to showing the entire county and inset maps of select cities and towns. Um, these do have very extensive legends, as you can see on the right side of the screen. 
So here's a closer look at the legend that shows the different symbols depicted on a map. And as you can see, again, very extensive. Um, but the ones we're interested in are the houses and buildings, which are the symbols on the right. And for this type of research, that's what's going to be most useful. So this is part of the Clark County Highway map from 1938, and it shows the area near Winterville. Um, and unless there's an inset map, these maps generally don't show a lot of detail for the cities and towns because they're county highway maps. And you notice Winterville is a perfect circle, and I don't know how many of you are aware of the concept of round towns. Um, so this is a phenomenon that really you see mostly in the southeast and in particular in Georgia. Um, when they were creating various towns, of course, there's an argument of who's in the town, who's not in the town, where do you set the boundaries. So the easiest thing to do was pick a center point, go out a mile or two, make a perfect circle. If you're in the circle, you're in the town. If you're not in the circle, you're not in the town. And once you kind of see these, you see these all over the place, either they still retain their perfect circle boundaries or you'll often see that they've expanded over the years, but still one part of it is a perfect circle and you wonder why that's the case. Well, that's why, it's because it started off as a round town like this. So, and in fact, if you look at um, a map of current Athens, you will see, um, I think Winterville still is kind of a round bump like this too. So, um, so yeah, as I say, when, when, once you know what to look for, you see these popping out all over the place. So this is the area that is near the airport there, okay? And again, this shows a good example of the different symbols that you would see um, on a county highway map. Um, so starting at the top, there is a church that is on the other side of, at the time, on the other side of the airport. Um, continuing clockwise, those are farm units, the uh, filled in squares there. Um, there is a seasonal business that is on um, uh, State 10 which I guess is uh, still 78. Um, St. Luke's School there is a school cemetery and church. Um, there is a business and filling station that would be on, I believe, Gaines School Road, if that's what it was called back then. Um, and of course, there are dwellings that are along there as well. And then finally, there is a filling station um, that is on 78 there. So again, not nearly as much detail as the Sanborns, but you can still see what was there at a particular, at a particular time. Another type of map that shows building footprints are the U.S. Geological Survey topographic maps. So USGS uh, started systematically mapping the country in the 1880s, um, and they can still are continuing to do this to present day. Um, when I say started mapping the entire country, they started doing maps at a 15 and 30 minute uh, scale, and 15 minutes refers to 15 minutes or 30 minutes of latitude and longitude. Um, and they didn't necessarily do complete mapping that way at that time. They did only certain parts of, of, of states and that. So for example, Athens, they didn't map really till the 1950s. Um, but once um, they kind of got to the 50s, they realized they needed to do the entire country and they needed to do it at a, a, um, a larger scale than what they had been doing. So they were doing the seven and a half minutes maps, which they still use today. So again, seven and a half minutes of latitude and longitude. So now as of 2009, these are no longer published in paper. Um, they have a new product called USA Topo. Um, which is updated every thir three years um, online. Previously, uh, the USGS maps were updated probably about every 20, 25 years or so. Um, just because, again, if you're doing the whole country, it takes quite a bit to go through and, and do updates on these. Um, but the benefit of the USA Topo is that it can do updates every three years because it's a digital product. Um, the downside to the USA Topo, um, people have said, is it's, it's, again, it's a digital product. It isn't necessarily meant to download and print, although you can do that. Also, it actually isn't set up to work in a GIS, a geographic information system, and so there's a bit of controversy about that. But it does have some benefits, and I'll show you in, in a, a minute or two here what those are. So at UGA, we have most editions of all maps for the United States in all scales. We do have a few gaps that we're always trying to fill in. So um, we do have as many of the paper maps as we can get our hands on. I should also mention that USGS has done a project where they have scanned every map USGS produced in all scales 
um, and make those available online for download as well. So anything that we don't have, um, which is very few, you can find on uh, USGS's site and download those for free, incidentally. Now, the Digital Library of Georgia, uh, we did a project when I first started here, and actually I've been here 10 years this month, which surprises me. Um, we did scan the 1530 and seven and a half minute topographic maps of Georgia from the 1880s to the 1950s that are available in the DLG. And again, while you can't download those when we do get our online application for maps um, put together, those will be included in there as well. Okay. So um, this is the Athens West sheet. Uh, from 1964, a seven and a half minute map. Um, okay, so a topographic map is concerned with topography, in other words, information about the land itself. Uh, so on these, you're going to see contour lines, which indicate elevation, and of course, a contour line, the closer together they are, the, the steeper an area is, the further apart, the flatter they are. Um, they're going to show vegetation areas, they're going to show um, natural features, river streams, what have you. Um, but of course, they're also going to show roads and, and um, uh, built up areas, although again, not quite the detail you would see like say on a regular highway map. Um, but again, you still can get a fair amount of information from these and particularly they do have building footprints on here as well. Um, now you'll notice here that Athens, this is only the western part of Athens, this is my personal theory of topographic maps, the area you're looking for is always split between two maps. So, um, and in fact in this case it splits a campus right down the middle too, which uh, sometimes is, uh, is a little irritating. Um, but again, you know, with these two, because we have multiple additions, you can see how an area changes over time too, so that can be, that can be very useful. So like the county highway maps, the USGS topo quads have an extensive set of symbols to depict various features on the map. And the features on the topographic maps are the same for all maps across the country. So this uh, um, pamphlet of symbols is quite extensive. So some of these would not appear on some of the maps here. Um, but again, the ones we're interested in are those that are related to buildings. And so here you can see um, the different types of uh, information that they would show. Okay, And so this is a close-up of the area that is around uh, Western Athens here. So the built-up areas are actually in pink, um, and, and um, often you'll see that, especially in some of the larger cities, if it's a congested area, um, those are shown in a pink color there. And again, you can still see that there are uh, building footprints here. Um, you can see there, again, it splits campus right down the middle. Um, you can see that Stegman Coliseum shows up on... Uh, on this particular map. Um, on the other side, you can see all those little, probably look like little dots here, but they're little squares, and those are actually dwellings. Um, okay, so you can see houses again, kind of like the county highway maps, you can see where houses are, are um, in different areas. Um, and since this is actually the area that is kind of like right near here, there's a drive-in theater, um, which has now been replaced by the shopping center, whose name I always forget, but you know which one I'm talking Alps. about. What? Alps. Yes, okay, okay. I drive by there all the time and someone finally told me there's a name for that. I'm like, really? I don't know that. So anyway, but that's, that's this area here. Um, and then of course up towards the top there you see the Navy Supply Corps School, which is now uh, uh, part of UGA with the medical college there. Um, and incidentally, they do have a Carnegie Library they've uh, uh, renovated for use uh, for the medical students, which is absolutely gorgeous here. Um, um, what else is on here? You can see kind of on the side here too, um, just the way this one works with a uh, topo quad, they'll you know, give you the different coordinates in the four corners, but they'll also show you on the side of the map what is the adjoining map so you can find that without necessarily looking at an index. So um, again, you can still get quite a bit of information here, not nearly as detailed as a sandboard map. So this is the USA uh, topo pro, uh, uh, product that replaced the paper maps here, okay, um, and it actually is a something called a geo PDF, which a, a PDF file with uh, different geographic coordinates built into it, 
Um, the benefit of this, um, again, besides that they can update this every three years, is it actually has layers, okay, that you can turn on and off on the side there. Um, so this one actually has all of the layers turned on, and so it does have overlaid on an ortho image, um, which is an air photo that's been uh, rectified to account for the curvature of the Earth. This also has the information you see on a standard topo quad. So in other words, it's got contour lines on there, um, roads, et cetera, et cetera. So um, sometimes this can be a little overwhelming to look at this way, so you can turn the different features on and off. Okay. So this one, if we here, this is where you would actually uh, turn the things, uh, the different layers on and off by just clicking on them. Okay. And so this is the one with all the top layers taken off. And so this is the actual um, um, ortho image that is underlying this. Okay. And again, you know, you consider when you're taking an air photo, of course, you're taking it from straight overhead and the earth is not flat. Um, so these have been uh, uh, geo-referenced so that they account for that. And so that's why it's a bit skewed on here. Okay. Okay. So that leads me to the last type of research, that, or, uh, ref a resource that we have, um, this uh, aerial photography. Um, so the Map and Government Information Library has the largest collection of air photos of the state of Georgia outside the National Archives. We have about 240,000 photos uh, from the 1930s to the 1990s. And more recent air photos are available online from places like USGS. Um, also the... Um, uh, I'm forgetting the name of this. It is the uh, Georgia GIS Clearinghouse also has some photos available as well. Um, we do have full coverage for most counties for at least one year per decade, and that does depend on um, how much of a county was flown. We're finding, we found that oftentimes um, that we don't have as much coverage of the coastal areas, for example, but we do certainly have more inland areas. And these are nine by nine contact prints. So in other words, the negative itself was nine inches by nine inches. And so the photos themselves are of very high resolution because of that. And they're in black and white. Um, most of these are from the US Department of Agriculture, who, um, of course, was flying these photos to get um, a sense of, of what the land itself looked like. Uh, but we do have some from other agencies and other companies as well, including some from USGS and some from private companies. Um, in the Digital Library of Georgia, there is a Georgia Aerial Photographs database, and it was one of the earliest projects the DLG did. They have approximately 50,000 images of select Georgia counties, and these are all photos from our collection. Um, you can't download the air photos from that site, and unfortunately, the indexing, because this was an early project, is really not so hot. Um, what they, the indexes for these are composite photos that are kind of small and a little hard to see, and so they put those up there so they can't zoom into them. Um, but again, our goal is that we will make this a more useful and easy to um, access database. We also are in the process of finishing up with a uh, company who has digitized another 50,000 of our air photos. And once we get those, we'll have you know close to half the collection uh, scanned and hopefully made available online as well. Um, but otherwise, certainly you can come and scan them and, and see them in our library. So this is what the homepage for the Georgia Area Photographs database looks like. Okay, And you'll notice there is a uh, list of counties on the side here, but also the state of Georgia has some of the counties that are darker. Those are the ones that have photos that are available. And so if you clicked on one of these counties, like for Clark County here, it would bring up a uh, list of all of the photographs that are available um, here, as well as some other resources that are available. Okay. So, show you a few um, air photos and kind of what they look like and, and what the resolution is. Um, so, this is UGA in vicinity, in vicinity from 1944. Okay, and oftentimes, especially when you're going way out in the country, uh, trying to locate an area, especially on an older uh, photo that doesn't have you know, some of the landmarks that you're used to seeing, like freeways and what have you, can be a little challenging, especially if there's not just much stuff there. But one of the advantages we have of finding Athens is we've got the stadium there. So um, that always pops out at us here. So again, this is 1944, and on the right-hand side, we've zoomed in a bit, again, and you can see the stadium. 
um, where the Tate Center currently is and the Miller Learning Center. There's a track and some open area. Uh, but again, North Campus is, is still, for the most part, the same, although you'll notice the library isn't there. Um, one of the things you notice here, too, is the trees on campus. Often when they're flying photos, they try to do these early in the spring or later in the fall when the leaves are gone, because again, if they're particularly a wooded area, you're not necessarily going to be able to see if there are leaves there. Um, in Georgia, with so many pine trees sometimes, which don't lose their needles, sometimes that can become an issue as well. So something to keep in mind is um, you may not be able to see some things just because there are trees in the way. Um, now, I'm originally from Minnesota, and sometimes when they fly early enough, you can still see ice on the lakes, so, um, or other interesting features that we'll look at in a moment here. But again, this is zoomed in uh, pretty close, and you can see some pretty decent detail here. Now, oftentimes, people who are using these um, are doing, say, site analysis. They want to see what's on a particularly, particular part of, of, of area over a period of time, and so they'll compare these over time to see what was there. Sometimes you do get people who come in and say, I want to sue my neighbors because I'm sure that land or that fence was there. I'm sure that road was there. Um, you can get to a certain level of, of detail on these, but at some point you can't see you know, really fine things. So you may not be able to see your neighbor's fence, but you might be able to see their driveway. So again, something to keep in mind. So this is UGA in vicinity in 1955, and again, you can see if you can compare here uh, from 1944, so over the course of 11 years, um, this area has changed a fair amount. We've got some um, housing down here, and uh, South Campus has changed a bit. <clears throat> Stadium is still there. Um, but on this particular photo, you can see on the right-hand side, that is the main library that opened in 1952. Is that right? 53, okay. So this building is only two years old. Um, and you'll notice behind it there's parking there, which now is the annex. We'll see that in another, um, in the next photo. Um, but again, at this point, it looks like they've got some pretty uh, mature trees with a fair of number of leaves there too. And of course, the idea when you're flying an air photo would be to fly it like right at noon so you don't have any shadows. But again, you can kind of see here too, there's uh, some shadows on some of these buildings here too, which sometimes like here, sometimes makes it a little harder to see things as well. Okay, so this is UGA in vicinity in 1973. Um, again, you see the stadium has gotten bigger. Um, Stegman Coliseum is available down here. Um, South Campus has changed a fair amount. Um, and then here again is the main library under with the annex under construction, and it actually has come um, along a pretty, whoops, ah, it's the wrong way. It's actually, um, gotten pretty far in construction because as again with the shadows on the other buildings you can see um, if you're familiar with the building the um, the annex that was added on is like seven stories or so so you can see the shadow on there too but again you can see there's still construction um, uh, equipment in that here all right so um, and I will say the map and government information library is located in the sub basement of the annex now when I started at UGA, they used to refer to it as the old building and the new building, but then we built the special collections building. That became the new building, and so then that became the annex, and that was very confusing for a while, but I think we're good now. Okay. So um, sometimes, of course, again, because these are photographs and because sometimes when you're flying, you don't necessarily have the best weather. Of course, again, you want to try to go on a perfectly clear day. So sometimes you can see some interesting features that you, you know, wouldn't necessarily want to have in your photo. Um, so the 1934 photo to the left, which is actually the oldest photo we have of campus um, and the downtown area, um, parts of it have clouds covering it over downtown, okay? Um, which, of course, are going to obscure uh, the view here. Now, today, most air photos are done by satellite, and they are making passes, um, you know, regularly. And so depending on when they go over, sometimes if you look up a particular satellite image, it's just all clouds and that type of thing. So, um, so it does happen, but in this case, we got some pretty good puffy clouds here. Um, now, this one on the right is the intersection of College Station Road and Bardot Shoals Road in 1960. And if you look down towards the bottom, you can see there's an airplane flying there, because um, we're going to have to assume that it wasn't just sitting in the woods right there. Um, 
but it most likely because of the altitude of it, it was probably heading towards or hopefully heading towards the airport at this point. So, um, so actually one of my staff members uh, uh, saw that. And I've seen in other photos, um, again, in air photos of Minnesota, sometimes they'll catch like a grass fire happening. As I mentioned, sometimes um, lakes still have ice on them and that. Um, so it is kind of interesting sometimes to see the, you know, this is a snapshot in time of some of the unusual things that, uh, that pop up there. So um, this one um, actually is sort of a famous photo. So um, on the left there is Candler Field in 1940, which is now Hartsfield-Jackson International Airport. And you can see, of course, in 2016, it is just very different than it was back in the 1940s. Um, it is, I believe, certainly the busiest, if not one of the largest in the world, right? Um, but if you look at the very bottom, it says, on the runway was painted Atlanta Welcomes Gone with the Wind. So um, Gone with the Wind, of course, premiered in Atlanta in December of 1939, and all the big stars flew into this particular airport, and so they decided to welcome them with this painted on the runway. And so, of course, you know, they painted it, and it was still there when they took this photo in January of 1940. Um, it is really kind of hard to see it, in fact, um, I had ordered a high-resolution uh, copy from the National Archives, and it still is kind of hard to see. Um, but when I started, of course, everyone's like, have you seen the Gone with the Wind air photo? So um, this is one of our famous ones, and it's, it's uh, kind of a, an, interesting, uh, uh, an interesting historical artifact, uh, particularly since UGA in Special Collections has Margaret Mitchell's papers. So, um, so again, some of the cool things that you can, you can find on air photos. So um, again, all of these materials are available in the Map and Government Information Library. They're available to um, not just UGA students, staff, and faculty, but anyone who has uh, uh, a need for this type of material to do your research. Um, we are located in the sub-basement of the UGA's main library on North Campus. Um, in the annex, as you saw before. Um, our regular semester hours are Monday through Thursday, 8.30 a.m. to 8 p.m., Friday, 8.30 to 6, and Saturdays, 1 to 5. We're closed Sundays, football Saturdays, university holidays. Our intercession and break hours are from 8.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m., Monday through Friday, and then 1 to 5 on Saturdays. We do have um, very extensive copying, printing, scanning services available. Some fees do apply. We also can do large format scanning um, for maps and that type of thing. But we do have um, oversized 11 by 17 flatbed scanners, so you can scan parts of maps and, and air photos. Um, you would need to bring a flash drive to transport your images, because these will make images, uh, when you scan them, that are going to be far too large to email. Um, and when you do come to use our collections, you do need to plan to spend at least a couple of hours um, because research takes time and sometimes, especially with air photos, to find the area you're looking for, that can be a bit uh, uh, time consuming. But we do have staff who are more than happy to help you find the information that you need. So, um, okay, uh, well thank you. Uh, these again are the sheets of Athens from 1913 and 1926. Um, are there any questions? Sandborn maps can go starting 1880, is that correct? For, for our collections, for our, yes. For our collections. So, uh, how, uh, what is the frequency of, the, of those updates? It varies. Some of the smaller towns, we only have like a year or two, places like Athens or Atlanta in particular, we have, you know, maybe every couple of years. Um, so, and, and ours too do not have the, the pasted over images. We've just got the, the full map. So when you're looking at it, that is the date of situation there. So um, again, uh, Library of Congress has the full set for the whole country. They have a recent contract that has all of them scanned and they're gonna start making those available online as well. Our set, our set is pretty complete as far as what they published. But again, if there's something we don't have, LC should have. Yeah. So the main web address, if we want to search online, would be what? Um, if you go to the library's website, which is www.libs.uga.edu, um, you can go to either Digital Library of Georgia and look in their collections for the materials that are online. You can also go to our website, which you can find there as well, 
We've got finding aids that um, cover the extent of our holdings um, that can, you can tell you what we've got before you come in. Um, and I know uh, Laura's going to talk about city directories, um, which we have an extensive collection in, in, in our library, and then we also have finding aids for those as well. Yeah. Yes? I mentioned how like, there are handouts from Digital Library of Georgia back here with addresses ah. on them. My handout, uh, which will be for a later session today, has that dashboard site for the libraries on it where you can go mm -hmm. there and pretty much spin out anything. So you might want to check the table back here. Yeah. And I think I did a handout last fall that may be online. I forget if that's the case. It's been a while. Um, but as, as Stephen said, you can get to everything through the library's uh, website there. And if not, um, you know, our contact information is on there. You can contact us by email or phone. We can, we can tell you what we've got on that You way. can also just go to the Digital Library of Georgia and find all kinds of other treasures that yes. you never knew were mm -hmm. available for free online. Yeah. We're blessed to live in this <laughs> Well, and our hope, again, I've mentioned this, um, our intent to create an online map application. Um, our, ho our, our hope is that we'll, we will be able to pull the maps and air photos out of the DLG and be more of a companion site. So it's, it's a one stop for maps in particular, because sometimes, um, especially in the Georgia Government Publications database, they can be a little hard to locate. Yeah. Howie, will the LC product be crossing the copyright barrier? Um, I don't think so. I, yeah, I bet it'll still go to 1922, but that's still a significant number of maps, yeah. Um, and LC, when they, uh, historically, when they've, if you go to the American Memory site and look at their maps, which is a wonderful way to kill an afternoon because they've got the biggest map collection in the country, um, historically a lot of the maps that got put online were based on people making requests for digital copies and so what they would do is they would scan it at a preservation level um, sell the copy to the person who wanted but then put things online so this is one of the one of the times where they're actually contracted out to make these all available but there are probably hundreds of thousands of those so it's taking some time so also right upstairs in the heritage room if you guys need help navigating dlg or sanborn or any of the sites um we have librarians upstairs in the heritage room we'll sit down at the computer and help navigate you through the sites mm -hmm. and oftentimes it's helpful when you're looking for um an area or, or a house or even some place that's that's outside of athens it helps to start by looking at a current map to see you know where it's at so you have it in your mind you know what the area around it looks like and then kind of work backwards that way um, as I say sometimes areas have changed tremendously between you know now and or the time it was originally there um, you know and of course freeways roads going in what have you will change things so starting off by knowing what it looks like now can be can be very helpful yes Hallie, do y'all have the soil survey maps for we, Georgia, or are they in the science library? Um, we have a set of uh, soil survey maps uh, of Georgia in uh, McGill, but um, the science library has them for the whole country. And the soil survey maps um, were done by U.S. Department of Agriculture. The first set were done in the 19-teens. Yeah, well, late 1800s, a few of them into the 19-teens. And they show soil compositions for all over the country. Um, and they, again, like USGS, they have a common um, index that shows what the different types of soils are. So depending on what part of the country you're looking at, some of those are just gorgeous with the colors they have. But the other thing they show is every building that was there. Yes. And so this is a way to find buildings mm -hmm. and they often identify churches and mm -hmm. those kinds of things. At, they're tiny, you need a magnifying glass, but this is a way to go further back. Yeah, yeah. To get some detail, and people never look at them because they think, well, they're just soil. But me and yeah. Robert Warren mm -hmm. taught me in the 70s that those are mm -hmm. a great resource to get further back to find out where buildings were. Yeah, and we usually, when people are requesting them for us, they're looking more soil, so I will remember that for the next time because I always see the building footprints too. I'm like, oh, look at that, and then I'm, you know. Yeah. Um, but the other thing with soil surveys, they also have accompanying text that explains what the different soil compositions are. Now, um, the uh, USDA has something new called a soil uh, web soil mapper or something to that effect where you can actually go in and, you know, do a 
uh, web map of a particular area. It's not quite as lovely or elegant as these soil surveys are, but it, you know, it, uh, and really soils don't change too much over time anyway. So um, we do actually have those scanned. What was that? It depends on where the beavers are. True, <laughs> true. Um, we, we do have those, uh, have scanned some of those. The problem with those in particular is they were folded originally and, you know, brittle paper and all. The ones we have in, in McGill are actually flat, but some of the ones for other parts of the country are still folded, and, of course, they become brittle, and so if you unfold them, they tend to kind of break. We've tried to... Um, scan the ones we have and we actually have a, a kind of a, some counties a cache of ones that were never folded which is great um, we still have a couple that we the ones we have are in terrible shape and we kind of need to track them down from other places interestingly with my other map librarian colleagues we, colleagues we often talk about if we're doing digitization projects for our state we really should go to another state and get their maps because theirs are going to be in great shape where ours are you know ratty and been used which is fine um, so you have some of that too, but that's that's another another thing that we we hope to get scanned and fill in our gaps there. Yeah. Are the um, Georgia sandbar maps available on Google Earth? Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. Again, that's that's what we're hoping with this um, with this uh, uh, project we want to do is to make them not just static maps but also interactive, so you can do layers and see how how things have changed over time. Because sometimes it is very fascinating to you know put that in some some places. I think Georgia State has a project um, that they had um, or have the uh, urban renewal maps from the 50s and 60s of Atlanta, and they've gone and put those online, and you can look at those and see how things have changed over time. Uh, of course, they're located right next to City Hall, which is part of the reason they have those. But um, so that's some that's kind of the type of thing we'd we'd want to do because again, it makes it easier to see how it compares to, to present day. So, but yeah, stay tuned. Right now, the libraries is undergoing, we're changing ILSs, so that's occupying everyone's time and stress level. So once that's done, we'll, 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 work, on, we'll work on our maps. Anyone else? Great, thank you. Okay, thank you.